Just yesterday, uh, hundreds of former federal prosecutors have signed on to an open letter uh, attesting to what seems pretty obvious that if Donald Trump was not the president, that he already would be facing charges over obstruction of justice based on what we learned uh, in the Mueller report. I wanna give you just a little bit from that letter. They said each of us believes that the conduct of President Trump described in special counsel Robert Mueller's report would, in the case of any other person not covered by the Office of Legal Counsel Policy against indicting a sitting president, result in multiple felony charges for obstruction of justice. They go on to say, of course, there are potential defenses or arguments that could be raised in response to an indictment of the nature we describe here. But to look at these facts and say that a prosecutor could not probably sustain a conviction for obstruction of justice, the standard set out in principles of federal prosecution runs counter to logic and our experience. And in this particular case, there's a lot of experience actually. So initially 375 people had signed on to the letter, growing to 459 in the hours that it was after it was published. That includes 20 former US attorneys, more than 100 people with at least 20 years of service at the Justice Department, most of them former career officials. The signers have worked in every presidential administration since that of Dwight D. Eisenhower. So they, 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 I guess, went up to someone's like bed or whatever as they were languishing there and got them to sign on this letter. But basically, you have people who have experience in this field under Democrats, under Republicans. Many of them have worked in high profile jobs for previous Republican presidents. And they all agree that based on their experience, Donald Trump, if he has a defense, it is just that Office of Legal Counsel memo, which I mean, we've said this many times before, I guess it doesn't necessarily bear saying. It is ridiculous that this one memo, a sort of idea of what the guidelines should be for indicting a sitting president would protect him in this case. I mean, we we lived through Nixon, we saw how that went. I don't understand how that is actually protection against the evidence that we have seen, the obvious obstruction of justice that happened. And look, you can read up more online about this letter. They talk a little bit about the evidence that, that Mueller described in his report, and we've talked about it ad nauseum. But again, like if what Donald Trump did, what is described in the report does not rise to the level of, of obstruction of justice, it just does not mean anything anymore. And the idea that a president could get away with that and that nothing would happen, I guess everyone seems to have moved on. Everyone seems to have been like, nah, you know, the Mueller report, that was an interesting time in our history, and I guess. You know, we move on to the next thing. Let's let's see what happens with infrastructure, but I can't move on so easily. I don't understand why people are so complacent with flagrant breaking of the law that Donald Trump not only did just up to the limit of the worst kinds of obstruction of justice that we could imagine, where he tried to get Mueller fired and didn't actually do it himself. That would be the worst, I guess, other than possibly killing Mueller himself. That he did all of that, but obviously did it to try to hinder this investigation in every way possible. Not only by not making himself and other principal witnesses available, notably he and his son never sat down with the investigation. They they tried to get people to lie to the investigators. They tried to bully witnesses into not cooperating with investigators. Every different formulation and level of severity of obstruction of justice, you can find the whole menu here. And not enough, not enough to do anything. And it causes people in positions of power and authority to say ridiculous things. Nancy Pelosi, who over the weekend said that she's worried Donald Trump won't actually step down if he loses a close election in 2020. She said yesterday that Trump appears to be goading us into impeaching him. Now, notably, she's not any closer to actually instituting any sort of impeachment proceedings or anything like that. She's just, I guess, annoyed by his behavior. Now look, him goading us or not is no reason to pursue impeachment. I would argue his constant breaking of the law would be a far better reason. But perhaps we're on that sort of personal level of politics where the only way that Nancy Pelosi is going to do what is obviously mandated by the Constitution and required by her position as a leader in the opposition party will be that he's goading her, I guess. Like you can obstruct justice, but you can't tweet in an arrogant fashion. I don't understand what's going on anymore. But what I do understand is that a horrible precedent is being set day by day. Other people are watching, and I'm not just worried about the crimes that have been committed, and I'm not just worried about the crimes that Donald Trump will commit over the next two to six years of his presidency, assuming that that's all that he gets. It's the presidents that will come after. Republican, sure, but possibly Democrat as well, who now will be freed up from any concern that if they break the law, 
if they hinder the pursuit of justice, all of that, that there will be any consequences whatsoever. And it's great that these federal prosecutors have sent their letter, and it's great that Nancy Pelosi's annoyed or whatever, but this requires far greater action than that. And so far, I just don't see it. And the polls are pretty clear that I saw one yesterday uh, that the people are sort of waning in their interest in impeachment. There was this big poll like people don't seem to be in favor of it. Is it any wonder who has been making the case over the past few weeks? Donald Trump obviously has been saying the entire thing is a witch hunt. And then you balance that with complete silence from the other side. Yes, Elizabeth Warren has said a few good things. Some people in Congress, obviously Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, AOC, other strong progressives have been making the case. But the leadership is silent. They are not making the case to the people. And so of course, the people are gonna start to listen to you know, the uncritical just purveying of Donald Trump's quotes that you see on, we, we talked about on the Twitter of these mainstream media outlets. The entire thing is incredibly frustrating. And so far, I don't see much of an out here. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.